I'm here with a friend of mine, uh, Pastor Lino De La Cruz from Victory Outreach. Lives right by my house, and I've been kind of getting to know Lino for the last couple years and seeing what he's been doing with uh, working with people on the street. And and I asked him if he would come here today and uh, share his testimony with us. So thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, awesome. So let's just go ahead. We'll start off in prayer, and then yeah. we'll get started. Let's pray. So uh, Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much, Lord, for being with us. Lord, thank you so much for uh, just the, the man that you have created in, in uh, yeah. Pastor Lino. Lord, and his family, his wife, his children, God, and we just pray over his ministry yeah. and with Victory Outreach and his church in Redwood City. Lord, just continue to Praise bless us. him, continue yes, to uh, watch over them. Continue to allow them to grow and to touch other lives, Lord. And we just pray for anybody that comes around Victory Outreach, uh, nationwide, worldwide, wherever you are uh, touching lives through this ministry, that you're changing lives for the better and just changing our folks and getting to know you. And I just bless our time together in this uh, testimony, in this podcast, Lord. I pray that anybody who watches this, hears this, um, Lord, that it, it speaks to them. Lord, I pray that somebody's that's unsaved or maybe in a drug addiction or out on the streets, Lord, they'll hear something from uh, Pastor Lino um, that will draw them closer to you, Lord, and maybe accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior today. Um, so thank you, Lord, for being with us. And we know this is only possible through your son, Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen. 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 So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, born and raised where? I was born in Salinas, California, um, okay. 1967. Um, I was uh, my 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 dad's name is Lino. Um, my mom is Beverly. Um, they were just people that you know, young people got mm-hmm. together a long time ago. And uh, my dad was in the military, um, so eventually he just moved on. You know, um, and they just it just didn't didn't work out. Him wanted to be in the military. My mom wanted him in the light in her life, and you know, he just eventually just chose his chose his life to go into the military. Um, basically, I have never seen him again. You know, it's pretty much he's been out of my life. Um, I know a little, a little bit of things about him, not very much, but I just know he did, he was in the military for a lot of years. Um, I eventually retired as a military person. Um, you know, and that's pretty much I, what I know about him. I have a few brothers from, uh, from him that I know about. Um, and most of the time I just was raised by a single mom. You know, my mom was the one that, you know, just, I spent all my life with her. Um, in and out of her relationships, same, you know, just yeah. kind of like whatever was going on in her life, you know, through time, you know, and just growing up, uh, lived almost all my life in Gilroy. Um, that's in Gilroy, California, those of you watching in other states, um, you know, just there, you know, as a young person, you know, just growing up, going to school, uh, eventually found myself in Hollister, graduated from high school there, and then eventually came back to Gilroy and just been li- lived my life there until about recently, about six years ago, I came out here to Redwood City. Cool. So, um, wow, that's cool. So, how old was you, how old were you when your dad decided to, to choose the military? I was barely. I was like an infant. He he wow. moved on real real early. I think he was in the military probably at the time I was born, and then just eventually just moved on. And you know that was it. You know he just never. Any brothers and sisters that were older than you? Uh no, I'm the I'm the oldest. Uh, and from what I from what I know and from him from what I've. You know, just chasing things and getting. I uh, I found I had a brother in prison. Is doing life in prison, yeah. um, through some teacher that reached out to me from South Carolina. I know he's in South Carolina. I know that I do know th- little bits and pieces. Sure, sure. Um, never seen him physically, talked to him or anything, but I do have contact with his family, my his sisters. You know, I'm close knit with them. My some of my aunts and stuff. But right. other than that, you know, he very, very to himself. You know, didn't really even with them. Does they don't have any kind of communication? Has been. You know, could I mean, I'm 55. Some of them has been about that long since they talked to him. You know, yeah, and, and he's yeah. been just kind of his own, living his own life, doing his own thing. You know, and, I do have brothers were, from him. Yeah. Um, four sisters from my my mom. I have four younger sisters. So, okay. and I'm the, I guess I'm the oldest of all of them. So, oh, okay, okay. So you and your mom still pretty close? Yeah, yeah very close. She, she still lived down in Gilroy and all that. She lives in Gilroy. Uh, she attends my church here in Redwood City. Oh, awesome. So you know, her and my sister come. They're Faithful members of my yeah. church here, so they, they're. She's always there. She was she actually. Were you raised to know Jesus? No, I was uh, Catholic. You know, it's like a lot yeah. of Hispanics. Yeah. You know, we we we, we grew yeah. up a Catholic. Um, I did. I had an uncle yeah. that um, got saved. You know, he was um, he he gave his life to the Lord and probably in the seventies, mid mid to early seventies, and you know he was out. He was somebody that was out in the streets drinking, bar hopping, back, you know, back in those days, going to the bars, you know, hanging sure. out, being yeah, the yeah. tough guy. Yeah, yeah. And one day God had an experience with the Lord and that changed his life, you know, wow. and 
I was young and I'd always like, we were close, you know, cause he was the one that kind of, kind of helped raise me at times, you know, with my mom, helped me out, you know, helped her out with me, I guess at times, you know, taught me to take me fishing, camping, all these things. And then when he got to know the Lord, it was like, I guess that was the next thing he introduced me to, you know, it was like God, you know, and I had an experience when I was young, you know, go, going around him and his family, going to church, you know, I liked it. It was like, wow, this, this is cool, you know, sure. liked the people, felt good, yeah. you know, but, um, you know, I just, he stayed praying for me, you know, it was a thing that he prayed for me for a lot of years, you know, yeah. and, and he just was the one that kind of introduced our family to Christianity, you know, so. Yeah. Crazy. So, so okay, so you were born in Salinas, went to, grew up in Gilroy, went to school in Hollister. What was your, was your school life? Were you like just straight A student, no trouble at all? You were an easy kid to get, you got along with everybody or? Do you I, have I, any? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was always the life of the party, put it yeah. that way. You know, I was, I, I was the kid in school that, you know, that, yeah, and it was like, what can I say? I mean, we, I, I was in Gilroy High School and I started getting, that's when I started getting into some trouble. My yeah. teenage life, I, I was always into sports, you know, played a lot of baseball. Okay. Um, was really in, you know, baseball, basketball were my, you know, my sports, you know, um, and played that in high school a little bit. Um, played a year of football, wrestled. You know, tried different sports. You know, I, I love sports. You know, yeah, so I was always cool. athletic. You know, even, you know, hanging out the streets, playing ball, doing stuff. You know, right, right. Um, always had a ball. Always playing as a kid. You know, go to the school, play with the bigger kids. Always out in front of my house. You know, but um, yeah, um, just school was this. It was it was a, it was a time to it was a breakaway for me. You know, to get away from lifestyle at home. You know, so it was like at school it was like that's where life was for me. Right, right. You know, that's where I engaged in. Getting involved in drugs, getting involved in drinking, you know, things yeah. like that. So, yeah, started early, started real early. You know, eleven years old, I was drinking, smoking, smoking weed, you know, doing that stuff. Sure. You know, graduated into cocaine when I was in high school. You know, okay. that kind of stuff, and found myself getting into some trouble. You know, and then on probation, and then almost on my way to YA. You know, three years of YA suspension was a eye awakening experience for me. And I said, you know what, I got to get away. Okay. So I moved on. Actually, I moved away from my mom. Moved away from the environment that was at home. Okay. Um, and just moved away and moved in with some friends and got my head together and graduated from school, you know, cool. Hollister. Cool. And then what happened? So then what was your journey like then? Because, I mean, because of who you are today is vastly different than, than oh, that. Yeah. So I just kind of interesting to hear how you got to from from Hollister to a pastor. Yeah. Well, it's like it, the journey's the offset of the journey started years. You know, my mom's my mom's lifestyle was really the one that kind of dictated single mom, you know, Going through some stuff, you know, been in a bad marriage, you know, bad then just relationship, you know, as a young person, you, you when you're in the, that kind of lifestyle, single life parent, you know, sometimes you get pulled into your your parents' lifestyle, sure. know, or their journey, you know, you're part of their journey, and you right. things happened in her life, you know, men that she was with, there was a lot of abuse, you know, for her and then for me, you know, I had a younger sister, and you know, but I kind of you, know, you protect her, you know, I protect her from a lot of things and went through a lot of abuse, you know, with these individuals that she chose to live her life with and just went through that's what i think kind of got me away that was my that's why the outlet of school you know being around my friends getting mm -hmm. away and then kind of getting caught up into all the stuff and you know getting caught up into drinking and doing drugs and you know and eventually like i said you know i went from gilroy was more of a the high school i was going to was more like you know i was getting in trouble you know probation things like that and then eventually i just graduated into cocaine when I moved to Hollister it was like all of a sudden I was like whoa okay this is a different environment everybody was they were rich kids you know and oh, I was like wow right, okay right, yeah and graduated into another level of you know of, of using which was cocaine mm -hmm. and eventually got introduced come, I would come home and and visit my mom and her, you know her boy the my little sister's dad I didn't have any three younger sisters she ended up having three daughters with this man and you know he was in the PCP whoa yeah so I mean me and my friends that I hung out with, they were we got introduced to the PCP, and then all of a sudden I was like, "Well, okay, this is another adventure." Yeah, you know. And then so, but I was away, and then I, I like I said, I graduated from school. I, you know, I took care of all that stuff, and you know, I, I said, "Okay, I'm on the right track." Got my head focused. My pro got off probation, got off all these things, sealed my record, and then one day I said, "You know, I'm gonna go to the military," you know, and. I went in, and that they were like, "Hey, you know, you've been in some problems. You've had some problems when you were a kid." I said, "Yeah." So I was lucky that they were gonna waivers, a lot of waivers, and they were gonna let me come in. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, I had, you know, I got medically rejected because of a, I had a hernia, so I didn't get to go in the military. But after that, I just started getting into drugs, and it was just okay. like it was over. 
you know, that, I mean, I was, I just, the tailspin began, you know, I can't, like I said, I moved back home and started seeing the lifestyle, you know, mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. been attracted to the lifestyle, you know, I mean, kind of something like you know, the up, upbeat, you know, fast paced things. You sure. Know? So, sure. So, uh, you know, I, I moved home and from there it just, man, it got chaotic. Yeah. And what was, um, so what was the turning point? Like, I mean, you go through all that, like what, what, what finally got you? What was your come to Jesus moment? Well, I think, you know, I, like I said, it, it just got real chaotic. I went through a, like, probably I'd say I was in a, probably a, at that time I was in about 12, 13 year run of addiction, starting mm-hmm. from the introduction, you know, of drinking, the gateway drug, marijuana into the, sure. to the full realm of, you know, experimenting with things, LSD, yeah. heroin, PCP. Right. PCP was the one that kind of stuck with me. Yeah. So when I moved home at 18, you know, it was like, I saw, I was always, in, it was kind of interesting because, you know, dealers were somebody that were they, they were attracted to me because I was, I knew a lot of people. Sure. So they were always like, oh, this kid, you know, I guess I stood out to them and they were always come to me and say, hey, you know, you want to make some money, you want to do some things. And right. I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. You know I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm game. Let's, right, you know, whatever. right, right. And I got caught up in that lifestyle. You know, the money was fast. Oh, yeah. Everything was good. And. You know, I'd get a job and I'd be like, I'm not even making no money here. Forget this. I'm going home. You know, yeah, I'll see you guys yeah, later. You know, yeah. this fast food restaurant ain't cutting it. I can go make this and make this in a couple of minutes at home. You know. Yeah. But, so I got really in, in the, and it was a, basically there was a family business going on, okay. which was at home, and it was it was PCP, and I wasn't really fully into it yet, but I just kind of started seeing the business. You know, mm-hmm. and times mm-hmm. would be like, oh, I got to go somewhere, and they'd leave me with all their stuff and be like, hey, you know, can this person, that person comes around, just you know, sure, and. I'm sitting there exchanging all this stuff, and I'm looking like, wait a minute, I'm I'm actively in this, you know, I should just do my own thing, you know. Right, right. So I got caught up in it, you know. I started yeah. getting caught up in the in the in the lifestyle of you know fast money, you know. Sure. Dealing was really, you know, got really connected into it, really heavy, you know, and got really involved with some people that you know that were really really engaged in this lifestyle, and you know, and it was just the the trust was there. I never was somebody that, you know, I didn't. Want to get my? I didn't like to get myself caught up in a, in a mess, so I, you know, I always wanted to keep a good name, and I, so I, you know, just was able to move a lot of stuff, move a lot of weight for them, and they kind of just always, you know, it was easy, it was easy money, and I got really intrigued by that lifestyle, and then I, and then you know, I became my own worst enemy because I became my own best customer in a sense, you know, and started using, right. every, started smoking this stuff like crazy, right? You know, right. PCP was my drug, and you know, I, I got really heavy into it, um, and was just. After 36 convictions and right. all of a sudden I started getting really serious about doing time, you know, because that's what happened. Started doing a lot of time. Every right. year was, okay, I got to go do some time for a little while, you know, right. and I finally graduated to prison. Yeah. You know, San Quentin, you know, it was like. Crazy. It was a graduation I didn't I didn't want, you know, but I got there and I was like, oh, what am I doing here? Right. You right. know, no whole, a whole nother environment, a whole nother world. And, I, and you know, and I remember people that that were my friends that were doing some heavy time, you know, mm-hmm. life in prison, making mistakes, you know, you know, bad choices, and would come to me and tell me, hey, what are you doing here? You know, this isn't who you are. This isn't your life. You're, sure. not, you're, not, you're not this kind of guy, you know? Yeah. You, you know, I did, because I did well in school. I was always known as a kid that had, I did well. I exceeded in my, you know, my education. I was kind of, always did, had the heavier classes and always did stuff, but able to live this crazy life and still maintain this balance. And, right. You know, I was a ASB treasure of my class right but i was also the biggest drug dealer on campus sure you know sure. so it was like you know it was like it was pretty crazy and I, when i think back and i look at it you know i'm like wow this life that i live was pretty it was pretty heavy it's pretty heavy journey no you know, kidding from and it just started young yeah you know and it just tailspinned into my young adult life um like i said 1991 i just graduated i went into prison and i was like walked in there and i looked around and said oh no this is not where i want to be right Hey, let's stop for one second. Um, I, I just realized. Bye. <laughs> Street Life Ministries, take two. So yeah, so I mean, I got, I finally made it to prison after a lot of years of just kind of, you know, doing county time, doing jail time. You know, I was kind of like, you know, a lot of people just county time was just kind of like, almost like, well, you know, summer camp to some some extent. You know, again, and it was just the time of re just. From all the drug use, everything just kind of over time a break, you know. But um, in 1991, like I said, I went into prison, you know. But it was interesting. I, I share with people all the time. It was in those moments that 
being there because you know you're, you're there and you know it's like when you first go in you're, you're in isolation for a period of time you know processing whatever you want to call it and it's where you know i've always known the lord the thing is about it, i've always had a god somewhere in my life because like i said my uncle you know when i was around him young you know going to church and him always trying to get me to go to church i would when i'd want to get away i would go to him and you know go to his church you know and go hang out and and you know but then eventually you know still do my thing but Seemed like I always knew because something, some may, I, I, I look back and I guess it was a seed through him that was planted. And because of his prayers, you know, it was always like something in me about God. You know what I mean? It was like, so when I got there, I was like, I just, I was tired. I was tired of that lifestyle, you know, living this, putting this long trail of drug addiction in my life, you know, mm -hmm. always wanting more, saying, man, this has to be more life than this, you know, knowing that in me that I wasn't built for that, you know, that I was like, I wasn't like, I never looked at myself any like any better than anybody or I felt I was greater than anybody, but I also knew that somewhere in me was like, you know what, this is not who you're supposed to be. Sure. sure. You know, and, and it was there when I just started one day just asking the Lord, you know, I was, man, God, you know what, what's up? You know, is this where this this where this part of my life now starts? Is this where I'm headed now? This is it. Because if I end up here and this is the trail, I know this doesn't lead to anywhere but destruction, and this is where I'm gonna end up, and that's gonna be the end of it. And as I was there, you know, clearing my head, you know, I, I, well, I'd already been incarcerated for a long time during that time, but when I, I was there and I would look out and I'd be like, okay, you got my attention. Is this what it's about? You know, what is it? Mm -hmm. And I find, and it was at that point where I just said, okay, you know, if you can change this, then I'll serve you. If you can fix this, then I'll give you my life, right? And, you know, we, you know, we say that a lot, you know, we're in those places, in those positions. Mm -hmm. And I got out and, you know, it wasn't like right away that it happened. You know, there was a period of time I started using again and I was on my way back. And um, I had a God experience, but it wasn't in me. I found, it was later on, I realized it was through my, pro my parole officer. Mm -hmm. Interesting habit, he came and got me, he was gonna take me back. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get into a victory outreach home at that time. I was, I said, you know what? I didn't try to get in a home. I'm not trying to go back to prison. I was giving tasks, dirty tasks, all these things. I knew it was going to happen. Sure. You know, evident it was going to come. Eventually, the, the rope was going to just, it was going to be, that was it. Right, right. And sure enough, he came and was taking me, and I started fast talking. You know, hey, you know, there's a program. Let me go to this program. Let me try it out. I never had a chance, blah, blah, blah. Just asking, you, about, you know, run it long story short. And he was like, nah, you know what? They ain't going to work. And, and, for, and back in those days, there was no cell phones, nothing like that, so there was nobody to call, you know? It was, right. So it was just like, okay, you know. So I gave up, you know, and I just said, all right, well, I guess I'll go do a detox and try it all over again. He was talking to somebody, and I was like, what is this guy doing, man? Who's he talking to, you know? I, like I said, there's no phone, so he's talking to somebody in the car. I'm like, I gave up. Later on, I realized that he was a Christian. I found out he was a Christian. Mm -hmm. And God, and at that moment, when I think about it, it was that God was dealing with him, was speaking to him, because he turned around and said, I'm gonna give you a shot. There's a little bit more of the story, but I mean, he told me, I'm gonna give you a shot, I'm gonna give it a try. And he took me back and put me in a home, the Victory Outreach Home in 1991. Mm -hmm. And there, my journey with the Lord began, you know, it was like, it wasn't always great, it was always still trying to get all that lifestyle out of me, that, that addiction, the learned behavior, all that accumulation of, you know, who I was, the identity that I built, you know, trying to, you know, all that stuff was in me. Mm -hmm. You know, so I went through a process and eventually, you know, I met a man and it was, you know, his name was Pastor Robert. You know, he was there in Gilroy and, and man, he helped change my life. You know, he gave me an opportunity. I, you know, he started working with me, started discipling me, started really digging into my life. Sure. You know, and I found out I had a lot of, we had a lot in common, the dad thing, you know, the drugs, the lifestyle. Right. And it, it really, captured me how he, you know, how this man was anointed by God and his preaching and his teachings and everything. And I was like, that's heavy. You know? mm -hmm. And it was in that point where God began to speak to me. Mm -hmm. You know, after all these years of using drugs and living this life and living this lie and chasing something that wasn't even there, you know, I came to a point where I was like, man, there's something, there's something for me, mm -hmm. you know, and I went through a period of time and, you know, things didn't, you know, happened right away it was you know it was a few it was it was some few years i went by um eventually i met my wife um you know she had, had two kids and we got married and you know we went to we were in the church together and things and you know like a lot of married couples they had our ups and downs sure you know sure. went through struggles went through things it wasn't always always the best but you know we went through a period of time where there was some really hard times mm -hmm. but you know 
about 15 years ago, we just came to grips, man. And after losing everything, right, we just said, you know, enough's enough. And we came back, and you know, since then it's just been it's been a good adventure. You know, it's been a good it's been a good journey. Right. You know, had some eye awakening experiences. You know, we we shared with a lot of couples. You know, but we, we our marriage was destroyed. You know, sure. But you know, with God, God can put. You know, you put anything back together. Right. If you're if you're willing to let him, he'll. You know, my life was was in shambles. You know, from abuse to drug abuse to, you know, all these things that I allowed to happen. You know, you know, you you, you tear you can tear your, your self esteem apart if you you know if you really put put good work into it. And I did. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and I put a lot well, of. You had no father figure that really showed you how to be a be a man, right? And yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, I I can relate with my own personal. And the ones that were in my life were all messed up too, you know. Yeah. Uh, one of them now is actually actually serving the Lord. I'd actually led him to the Lord. You know, that's I, awesome. You know, the other one has actually he gave his life to the Lord a lot of years ago. That's cool. You know, and so there, you know, and there was a lot of regrets, and they're, they, you know, they've come back and you know try to you know express you know their apologies and things, and you know, and, and I'm okay with it. You know, I, I it's in the past. You know, things happen. Yeah. But you know, I I think now. Um, if it wasn't for what God did through this ministry, you know, Victory Outreach, it was, a, it was a blessing. You know, yeah, God's my savior, but he uses these, these programs like your street life and, you know, higher power, Victory Outreach, these ministries that they're out there that men like ourselves that have been through some things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that, that there's hope. You know, we, we, yeah. we, we express that's all we're here to do is express a message of hope. You know, man, there's, there's opportunity, you know, and, and there's young people that are really just going through it in, this, in these communities. And, you know, we're here. And I mean, I think. I thank God that He placed me here. You know, I, I was coming up and down this peninsula for two two years, and I was man, it stood out to me. Redwood City stood out to me. Sure. And one day I pulled over in here, and it was always a dream. My pastor passed away in 1996. Uh, he went home to be with the Lord in 1996. Yeah, I'm 39 years old. You know, he you know he's come to his addictions. You know, not not he was addicted, but the effects of using yeah. heroin and everything it right, caught up right. to him. Yeah. You know, and um. So after that, I was like, follow us again, you know. But but I, you know, I met Pastor Ed. Was a great man, very instrumental. He was one of the elders of our ministry, and just really, he took me in, and man, just continued to build and taught me leadership, mm -hmm. taught me how to put a vision in me, and you know, that's what I think carries me now is that being, you know, into the ministry. You know, I, you know, God's been good to me, fixed everything, fixed my marriage, fixed my family. Yeah, everything's not perfect, but there's things that, you know, I continue to see progressing. You know, the church, right. It's a blessing, you know, to be here in this community. There's, you know, there's a need, and I think because of that, that's the part that keeps me going. You know, as far as ministry, you know, you know, my desires, you know, as far as keeping that hunger and that passion for people out here. Right, right, right. And um, so right now, like you have currently, you have a, a victory outreach here in Redwood City. Yep. Right. You're running a church. Yep. Um, you're obviously I've known you because of some of the mutual contacts that we've had through some of the folks, our, our, our folks on the yeah. street and, <laughs> and some young girls that, that have been connected through my wife and stuff. So you, your home has always been kind of like an open place for yeah. folks. And, and um, so it, it's been, it's been awesome to watch how you've kind of just come into Redwood city and like, Hey, I'm going to plug in here. Like you said, you, you found a, found a niche here. And obviously one of the things I heard, really early on in ministry from a Redwood City police officer. He told me, he says, you know, all roads lead through Redwood City. We got two of the biggest jails here. We've got the county seat. We've got the courthouse. We got all the probation. We've got the sex offenders. We've got, I mean, everything here in Redwood City. It's like everything. And and, and let's just face it. it it's funny. The, the roads lead through Redwood City, but most of the people don't ever leave Redwood City. <laughs> so so it's like, it's like the, the field is plenty here. Yeah. You know? And so um, for me, it's grateful to have another, brother in Christ actually on the streets. Um, but you know, uh, one of the things that you do that it's really cool. Like I know I have the ministry where we feed the folks, right. But you and your son and your folks, you, you guys are going out and you're handing out tracks and stuff like that. Tell us a little bit about like, how, how does victory outreach work? Like what is what, like, what is your, as a pastor, as somebody trying to reach the loss, like what is your, like, what is your vision for, for Redwood city? Our mission is to reach broken people. Right. And one of the things that, like you said, I chose Redwood City because a lot of people ask me, why Redwood City? You know, why, why did you choose Redwood City of all the cities in the, in the world? And I said, it's right in the center. I could have went, you know, I could have went to San Mateo, East Palo Alto, somewhere, but I, for some reason, it was right here. And, and I felt this was the, the center of it all, you know, for me. It, I thought, I'll be right in the middle of everything, you know, um, and it's proven that way. Um, I think one of the things that we, 
the dynamics of our ministry is that we we're not culturally, you know, or racially anything. Mm-hmm. We're open to anything, you know. We we just we got churches in South Africa. We got them in, sure. you know, Amsterdam. We got them all over the world, all over the United States, different parts of the, you know, and not seg- just sectioned out to Hispanics or whites or anything like that. It's just a multicultural. You know, you go into our into our churches. It's never really a thing of we choose or pick or try to reach. We just we go in and we look, we see where the need is, and you know we infiltrate that, and that's what we've done. We've seen, you know, we've been we've been here. Um, like I I used to come and I would just it, I would just go to the Starbucks right down the street over here on on El Camino, and I that was a place I would go and I would pull up and I'd see homeless people there and I would say, hey, you know what? They'd ask me for money, so I'll give you some money. I go, but I, you're going to give me some information. Yeah. You know, we're going to exchange some goods here. I'll give you money, but I, I'm going to ask you some questions. They'd be like, oh, what do you want? I'd be, no, no, I'm I'm from a church. I'm going to be bringing a church here. Yeah. But I want to know what's what, what's the culture? What's the, what's the need here? Mm-hmm. You know. And right away, I saw the homelessness. I saw I saw that, but I knew that. You know, when I got when I met you, I said he's got that covered, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I said, what the need here is that recovery for the for the addict. You know, yes, there's programs here, but I felt like we were missing Christ. Mm-hmm. And I and I've been, you know, I've done other programs, you know, I've done other things like NAA, all this stuff, and it's all good. They all, I've gotten good tools from them, but there was the Christ centeredness of it all was missing, and some yes. and a lot of the things. Yep. And I said, that's what we bring to the table. We bring the Lord. We bring God first. You know, mm-hmm. God can heal anybody. You know, and that's our message. You know, don't, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You can be a drug addict. You can be the most righteous person in the world. You still need God in your life. Amen. You know, and, and that's the way. I, and that's the way. That's our message. You know, I've, I've I've had people in my church that never did drugs, and they're like, "Well, I don't even know what I'm doing at Victory Outreach because you know it's a drug 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 addict church. This isn't a drug addict church. This is a Jesus church. This Amen. is a God ministry. Amen. You know, Amen. and you look at our founder. You don't. You know, you you'd never think he did drugs, but he was he was a heroin addict. Right, you know, running the streets of New York, you know, yep. out there, lost, bound, but came to L.A. Yeah, and they even told him, "Why are you going to L.A.? You know, you need to come home." He said, "No, I'm going to stay here. There's a need." And and out of that, that just that one man, God touching him, it, it sent a message to shockwave throughout the world. Sure. And we're not done. We're just beginning. We work with a lot with the young people. We have a big vision for young people right now. Our ministry is really geared to a, a, a an age group of you know we call it a third wave, mm-hmm. right? We we've had our we've had our you know. From our pioneer state to our Joshua to, to now is our third wave. Our third wave is young people, mm-hmm. you know, anywhere from 18 to 35. And it, it all it all fluctuates to our recovery homes, through UTCs, training centers, all throughout the world. And and we're really you're trying to reach these young people and, and let them know that there's God can, whatever he needs to do in their lives, that, that it's available to them, that there's you know, there's hope. And then to, to really challenge them mm-hmm. and let them grow, you know, because that's what it is right now. Our young people, are, are they're lost. Even in our city, you know, we, we see a lot of lawlessness going on in our city with a lot of things that are happening here, with these these kids riding bikes, you know, yeah, all oh, of a sudden, yeah. and, and you know, the, yeah. and and when I got here, I remember six years when I got here, you know, because of coming from that background, I started seeing young kids. That I was saying, man, they're gonna have, they're gonna have a, they're gonna have a gang problem here. Oh yeah, they're gonna have an issue here. And yeah. I would talk to the police in the square. I remember telling them, you know, you got an issue here. That's it's uh, it's it might look dormant to you, but it's about to burst. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't. They would tell me I was crazy. They would tell me, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I said, right. And I said, no, I know what I'm, I, there, yeah. it's about to happen. You and I were talking about that yeah. years ago. And, and I kept, to, I, I took your message because I'm very connected to the police department here. And I kept telling them, I go, hey, I think we might be having a problem with the gang stuff. No, no, no. We've squashed all that. And then just like you said, little by little, and now it's, and now it's all over the place. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah I, I know. It, it, it's, you know, you, you, you and I both, I think sometimes, at least for me, I feel like sometimes I, I'm yelling in an echo chamber. You know what I mean? And you try you try to scream to people like, hey, we need to get more more boots on the ground, yep. you know, with Christ and 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 I, I'll be honest, I mean I don't mean to sound bitter towards the church, but a, a lot of a lot of churches um have gotten very used to used to being very comfortable in their church and not going out and doing what needs to be done. And now you have what you have. And 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 they don't wanna they don't want to get uncomfortable. That's one thing I like about your church and like the people that come and serve it at street life ministries of the people that serve at the ministry and stuff. I had a lot of non-Christians that come serve the ministry, but they're, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. Yeah. You know, like you, you guys are, you're, you don't mind going on the front lines. You don't mind getting in the, in the, in the mix with these kids that people are scared of, you know? And I think, I think that's one of the things that needs to happen because these kids are like you and I, and they grew up with a broken home and, and banged up and they, they're lost. They just need, they just need love. They need to be taught, they need to be to be a band, you know, and, and and nobody's paying attention to them. 
Yeah. A lot of times there's no, you know, you listen to them. I mean, there's, they're always out there. There's a group of them out there and there's some that stand out. And, you know, I recently just kind of changed the, the dialect, how I speak to them. You know, mm-hmm. I kind of said, hey, look, because they may not want it right now. Mm-hmm. I, did, I, I grew up knowing, knowing about God, but mm-hmm. didn't want that relationship with them or didn't right. understand that I needed a relationship with them right, right. or didn't know where to go. So the message on that was like, here, here's the flyer. Do me a favor. Don't throw it away. Put it away somewhere. Just go home. Put it away. Right. Even if you bury it in your dresser drawer or somewhere, somewhere in a box, like you put your safe keeps, whatever it is. But one day, if you need somebody. Call me, right? Call us. Yeah, I love it. You know, because it's like, it may not be today, but if we're not out there today for their tomorrow, where are they going to go? Where's their hope? Sure. And, and the church, like you're saying, the modern church today has gotten away from, it's comfortable. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, pan- the pandemic made a lot of people comfortable mm-hmm. where the people at their jobs are not even going back to work. Yeah. So you think the church, they got comfortable and they're not even going to church. Yeah. I can just watch church from home. Yeah. I can just serve God this way and I'm okay. Or I can go to church and just feel good Sunday because I did something good today. Right. You know, and it's not about a, it's not about a lifestyle with God anymore. It's just about feeling good in that mm-hmm. moment with God. Yeah. You know, and, and, you and I both know we've had we had life we had life changing experiences where it was like I would go to church mm. and feel good, sure, and then go and but get high for the rest of the day. Yeah, oh and, yeah, and, and then and then but it wasn't until I realized man I could feel like this all the time. Yeah, and that's where the change came. You know, years ago it came where I was like man this is I can have this all the time. Yeah, you know I you know I share with my kids you know it's like man I don't have to worry about nothing no more. Right. I don't have to worry about if I'm going to eat or I'm going to sleep or, you know, because I was homeless at times. Right. I lived right. on, I, there's times in my life, my young adult life where, you know, in that teenage life, I didn't have nowhere to go. I'd go sleep on a park bench yep. and look up at the sky and wait for the, wait for the dark to turn to light and then figure out what I was going to do. Right. Or, or the other thing too is like today, what I, one of the things I love is, is I have no warrants. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? No I, I, I don't have to worry about like if I, if, if I see a police car, I don't have to jump. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We're working with them now. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, exactly. We're partnering. We partner like, with that's how good yeah, God is. It's amazing it. to me. Like, yeah. So, well, thank you so much. No, I appreciate I, it. I really appreciate, appreciate your time. interview. I appreciate your testimony. And, and I'm, uh, I love your journey. And uh, I'm great, very, very grateful to have your, your church and your, your ministry here in Redwood City helping the youth and the adults. Like, like yeah. you have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of crossover with some adults that you and I both know. Yep. Uh, mutual friends or mutual acquaintances that we work with. So, it's a good thing, and 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 I and I and I would love to leave it like one one thing is is that um, as people think, you know, AA and NA, the twelve steps, right, is only for an addict. I, I think if if people in the church did a twelve step program and got rid of the stigma of Alcoholics Anonymous, they would they would break free from a lot of stuff. Yeah, and just like Victory Outreach, it may be known as as a, a ex gangbanger, ex drug dealer, or whatever who's who's turning over to Christ. But it's a church, yeah, and it's serving the Lord. And you guys are you guys your theology is solid. You're you're on point with your messages, and you're a Bible believing church. And and yeah, so drop the stigmatisms and, and yeah, just, just get your a, butt in the church. Stop making it, up excuses, right? Yeah, I mean we. I mean, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we are our world's in this place. Yeah, not Redwood City. It's a world in this. place. Oh yeah, no you know. Kidding. So and and if they could, if the world would just say, man, they're looking for they're looking for an answer, and they're like, well, I got the answer. Yep. You know, and, and that's the whole the whole thing is that we we're like that's our hope is that man we got to bring hope to the city this county this community whatever it is and just really get the message out there and partnering with you know with yourself you know I mean the 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 police police officers that I've had you know engagements with that are you know they're like man help us out can you do this can you do that you know um, it's been great you know and I look forward to the future I mean can't wait to see what you know god has in store for us this you know these things are just the beginning so it's great i'm looking forward to all those things and awesome. thank you for having me appreciate it no thank you so much yeah and god bless you god bless you all right yep